We all knew this was coming, but what? So my name is Al and we're going to take a look at the upcoming great new features of ZBrush 2023. But overall, this seemed like a very weak update. It's been, you know, about a year since the public announcement of Maxon buying ZBrush. And I know there was lots of transitions happening, firing, hiring, figuring everything out. But this is very, very small uh, compared to previous years, in my opinion. I'm curious to see if more things are going to be added for ZBrush 2023, because at this point, there's no reason to upgrade unless you're doing the subscription model uh, which fair enough you'll just get that as part of the price but there's no possible way that this would be enough to entice me to upgrade with that being said so this is what you'll be missing in zbrush 2023 so this one is a revamped z remesher the first thing about this is there's a cache system so whenever i click z remesh and it's going to just store that file in the cache that way the next time i click z remesh or the brand new retry button it doesn't have to redo that whole calculation so the retry button is super cool because i can Z remesh, I can press retry, and then I can just go back and see between the two. This is pretty dope. And if you don't understand why that's awesome, you probably don't use Z remesh a whole lot, and you should be. Next up is retain poly paint. I mean, I can see there's some certain use cases where this will speed up people's workflow. It doesn't honestly affect me very much at all, but I think it's cool. Anything to save some steps is a good thing. So you no longer have to project the painting back onto your model and whatnot. So it'll just stay there. That's really great when you're Z remeshing. Mask region. Now, this is something I didn't really know that we needed but yes we totally need this so you can just mask out a shape there's some smart region options uh, but then it's like a, a paint bucket so it'll just fill in that mask you know you just kind of mask off sections of this and it'll just grab all of it so that'll speed up masking which is awesome next up is red shift integration we all knew this was coming but what <laughs> this is I don't care about this period some of you might love this that's awesome good for you uh, it's just not for me it's not something I would ever use if you're already using redshift then yeah that makes sense uh, but the downside to this is like you need a redshift subscription it's the only way you can use this inside of ZBrush if you have a max on one subscription or you know the redshift subscription that's just silly to me I don't I don't need that the next one's pretty cool let's apply the last action to your sub tools which is super handy sometimes you do one thing in the demo, they did like a dynamic subdivision, turn it off or on, and this will just apply it to everything. That can be pretty darn handy. So that's a good thing. You can also apply it to a certain folder, which is great. So I'm still unclear as to what actually upgrading to a brand new, you know, ZBrush 2023 even looks like. I'm a perpetual license holder and I will not do the max on one or pay for a subscription for ZBrush. So I'm still unclear as to what that will look like in the future. Like someday when I upgrade to ZBrush 2025 or something like that. What does that look like? How much is it going to cost? 